and indie filmmaking was, I think, where my heart is and what I've come from and what I kind of want to stay. And because it gives you more freedom to do what you want to do. Hi everyone, it's Jess from Fighting Spirit Film Festival. Last week we had Fighting Spirit Film Festival Birmingham. We made our return to the Mockingbird. We had a Q&A and conversation with Rupture cast and crew, and we have Rupture's director and writer here with us today. Please introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Ranji S. Moore. Uh, I am a filmmaker from Birmingham, and I am, as Jessa said, I am the writer, I'm the co-writer and director of Rupture. So the first question, we can skip it because most people find it very difficult, but describe yourself in three fictional characters. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, one probably Donnie Darko, mm. uh, just because I'm a bit of an introvert. Um, I just like to keep myself to myself, other than when I'm working. Uh, two, uh, probably Robert De Niro's character from Taxi Driver, uh, a bit of an insomniac and just likes to be in his head a lot. And three, um, if I was going to give you one, probably Jules uh, from Pop Fiction, because when I need to be a bit of an ass, I can be. As the fastest as anybody has answered this question, people yeah. really, usually really struggle. <laughs> Can you tell us about the first film you ever made? Yeah, the, wow, uh, that was a very long time ago. The very uh, very first film I made was actually not one that I intended to make, but I was called by my cousin who was doing a college assignment at the time. I was like, Ranji, I need to make um, a fake trailer for my assignment and I don't know how to make movies. You've watched a lot of movies, so can you just help me make one? And I've never picked up, and at this point, I'd never picked up a camera. But because I knew how a film was made and I knew what the angles were, I was just like, all right, I'll give it a go. So I made that film, um, well, fake trailer. It was probably like a two minute trailer or something. Um, and it's called Pyromaniac. Uh, and it's kind of a take on the grindhouse meets slasher kind of film. I think any filmmaker getting into film for the first time, usually that they tend to go into that kind of horror-ish genre because it's a very it's easy to make and you kind of get an idea, get an idea of how a movie's made. Um, so I did that for a long time. Uh, so yeah, that was that was my first movie, was Pyromaniac. And tell us how your filmmaking journey carried on from there. I struggled a lot, as you as you naturally would trying to pursue such a big career. Um, I've had many highs, many lows. Um, the highs being, and no one will probably believe me, but the highs being uh, I spoke with uh, E.L. James about Fifty Shades of Grey, about going to into a movie, about meetings with Ridley Scott, about him producing one of my movies. Um, I've had opportunities to work with Jason Momoa before. Mm -hmm. These are all very high moments, but I think I didn't get these because it wasn't my time and I'm okay with that. I've accepted that. Um, so yeah, my, my other highs have been um, being able to make my own movies, um, meeting the guys from the raid and uh, headshot the night comes for us. Those have been very big influential movies to me. So, and I've been, able, been fortunate to be able to make movies with them guys as well. Uh, I made my first movie, uh, well, commercial movie, which was Exile the Chosen Ones. And that was Sonny Pang, who was also the villain in The Night Comes For Us and Headshot. Oka Antara, who's in The Raid 2. Anna Al Rashid, who's also in The, uh, the Night Comes For Us. Mm. And then I've got various other projects which are in different stages of development with Yayan Ruyen, who's also the villain from The Raid. Chechep Arif Roman, Nathan Jones. You know, there's, there's projects which are coming up now. Um, but the, <clears throat> the lows have always been time. Yeah. money and generally the biggest one I think coming from an Asian background mm -hmm. generally no support mm -hmm. and kind of feeling like you're doing something quite different out of the box mm -hmm. which is not your normal thing to do within Asian culture um, so I'm trying to break that stereotype yeah. where it's like no you can follow your dream no matter what it is 
I mean, obviously, if your dream is killing people, obviously don't follow that dream. Mm -hmm. But if your dream is like to do something else um, that you know is not the typical doctor, lawyer, all that kind of stuff. If your if your dream is to be whatever it is, I think you have to go full force with it. And as going back to the Asian cultures and the Asian mentalities, because our grandparents, their parents, their parents, and our ancestors, they don't come from a lineage of arts, mm -hmm. most of them anyway. So when you try to pursue something in the arts, it's very much like, hmm, are you sure? But how are you gonna make money? Right, and it's like, the money is secondary. Yeah. You, have to, you have to love what you do first. Yeah. The money will come afterwards mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to yeah. be able to go down that route. Some people just make make movies just to put them on YouTube, and that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I did that for a long time. Um, that was just to get my name out there. Um, and fortunately, the right people saw it, and I was able to, I was given the opportunity to make, you know, the three movies that I made now, and now fourth one. How would you describe your filmmaking style? Filmmaking style? Um, well, I think I've taken influence from a lot of different people, to be honest. Um, and just kind of, it's, it's a merge of all those different styles, and I guess, you got my style. Um, I know that was heavily influenced by, as I think most people are when they're starting out, is Quentin Tarantino. That was my very first inspiration, and you know, I tried to emulate his style a lot. But as we all know, there's only one Tarantino. And then it was people like Robert Rodriguez, you know. Then your your very, I think, well known film filmmakers, which are like Martin Scorsese, Spielberg. And then it was, I think, I I started looking at a bit more into the types of style of film I wanted to make. So then I looked at David Fincher. I looked at the Safdie brothers. I looked at a French filmmaker called Xavier Dolan. I looked at so many independent filmmakers because I think my true love for film actually lies in independent film rather than big blockbuster movie making, which is also great. But but and there's some you can tell that there's a clear difference between the two, between blockbuster and indie filmmaking. And indie filmmaking was, I think, where my heart is and what I've come from and what I kind of want to stay because it gives you more freedom to do what you want to do um so yeah my, my style i think is a combination of many different for me because i don't think it's like oh i can narrow it down to one is there pressure on being a writer and director of a feature film and if so how do you deal with that there is i yeah I, there is pressure but it's not there's pressure to know your own script for sure and to know where you are and, and what the character's thinking um and then it's also pressure to get the performance you want because you've written a character and if the actor's not performing it the way it's in your head, you kind of have to let your ego go and be like, no, the, the actor's giving you a performance, their version of it. So you kind of have to go with that. And then, yes, there are moments where you can be like, I like, like, I don't know, 80% of what you did, but maybe the, in the last 15, 20%, if you could maybe try this. And that's the great thing about film because it's not live. You know, you can do different variations of it. But yeah, I, th I think, yeah, there is pressure being a writer and director, mostly to know your own script and what the character's thinking. When you're adapting somebody else's work, that's a different type of pressure um, because it's like now you have to adapt not only someone else's script, you have to make it your own. You have to know where you are in the script, what the character's going through. And if it's a script that you've got from like, let's say, America or like a different part of the world obviously that writer is not available to you then so you can't ask him questions and bounce stuff off of him so you kind of have to go with instinct and intuition of what you think is right and how you can mold and adapt the scene and the scenario so yeah it's, it's a different type of pressure being your own director and being a director on somebody else's work. Can you talk to us about the development of Rupture what was your writing process with for Rupture like? Well, the script for Rupture was actually, I had the script since um, 2019 or 2020, yeah, 2020. And the movie was going to be made late 2020. And it actually starred Sunny Pang. But the financing fell through. And so the project was shelved for a while. Um, and that project was given to me by an American writer. And it was originally called, uh, called it's a really silly name, but it was originally called Lazy Reason. Um, there's a moment in the film that the title refers to, which is why the film's called Lazy Reason initially. Um, and then it was shelved, the project was, I tried. I, then I re reworked on it, changed a few things. 
and then at the time I was getting heavily into um, the cyberpunk themes and genres and everything. And then the video game came out and I was very much drawn to the whole concept and idea of cyberpunk 2077 and Mike Pondsmith, who's the creator of the video game. And I was doing a lot of research and I was like, why is a movie like this never been made? A, a cyberpunk martial arts movie. I've never seen one. I know the cyberpunk action movies, which, you know, like Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, all that kind of stuff. But I was like, why is a cyberpunk martial arts movie never been made? So I was looking more and more into it. I pitched the idea to, to my producer and to my partner, uh, who's also our producer as well, Charmaine. Um, and they really liked the idea of, of doing a cyberpunk movie. So, so that was the idea for me to move forward because originally the, the, the script wasn't a cyberpunk movie. It was set modern day. Um, but the whole idea of setting it in a future saying in modern day that's just going into future was a very appealing idea to me. Uh, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of research to get all of the elements together, you know, the lighting, the props, all that kind of the, the visual look of the film, selecting the right DOP, you know, was a big thing as well. Um, and I think we've done a good job in, in, in creating Rupture. And, you know, bringing on Mark Strange, I think, was definitely an asset. You know, he's he's such a good talent. And I think his martial arts skill, I think, you know, speaks for itself, which is why he's in such big movies like Hitman, Man, Avengement, and Redcon. I think it's just because he has that ability. And I think the character that he plays in Rupture Zor is a very um, broken individual. And you kind of see his transition throughout the film from the beginning right to the end. And you see the stages of grief that he goes through until that very climactic moment. Do you, when you're writing, do you give yourself a certain amount of time to do the research? Um, how's your writing process like? For me personally, just because I'm trying to figure out how to develop a writing process. That's okay. Uh, for me, I don't think I've learned this over the years. I write with a budget in mind because the, the, like, it's, it's great to write stuff to just for the sake of writing and getting out. But then if you want to put something into production and if you're a first time filmmaker, you have to think twice most of the time. Am I going to write a hundred million dollar movie as a first time filmmaker? More than likely I won't get the budget and no one's going to finance my movie. And so you have to go with plan B, which is what, resources do I have available? What could I get for free? What kind of money can I raise in three, four, five, six months? And then you write the script according to all of those things. And I learned that from Robert Rodriguez, who, um, you know, from this book. And it's such a great book, Rebel Without Crew. And it kind of shows you the process of what it's like to write for a film that you only have a certain amount of money for. And that's essentially what I did with my first, second, and third movie. I knew the budgets that I had, so I wrote the script according to those. And and it was it was really simple because I knew that with ten thousand pounds I could get fifteen, twenty actors. I know that with five thousand pounds I can get a whole location for three weeks. And so I kind of developed stuff like that and I'd be like, okay, put all these elements into place. And then the research period is usually for me is the most fun which is pre-production which is getting all everything together the most boring part for me is obviously writing <laughs> and then surprisingly actually shooting the movie itself is quite tedious and is very draining mentally and physically <clears throat> but pre-production in terms of getting everyone together you know doing all the research getting all the pitch decks together getting all the board drops the props for me that's the most enjoyable and usually that will take me anywhere between if, if, I'm, if I'm rushing, probably 10 days, but usually I try to give myself at least eight, nine, 10 weeks to get everything ready. And generally you can, if you know what you're looking for. Uh, otherwise, if you're doing research from scratch, I think you need to have a script ready way beforehand. And then you need to have at least three to five months prep time. And yeah, so we're going back to rupture. The prep time for that was probably seven weeks, six weeks, and then Obviously, all the action previews were done way beforehand, probably two and a half, three months in advance. And so we designed everything already, so we knew what we were doing. And it was just about placing all of those elements into location, 
what the art department would look like, what the lighting would look like, how we can maneuver things, and then time. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. That's my very long answer to your short question. You like to film in Birmingham, where you are from. What was the process of location scouting like? Did you already have locations in mind when you were writing the script? Uh, I probably had like 40% of the locations in mind when I was writing the script. Um, and like I said, the script wasn't mine initially. It was given to me by an American writer who had already written with everything in mind that he'd had. But I was facing his scenarios in Birmingham and be like, okay, so he's written that there, where could I place that in Birmingham? And then when we changed it to cyberpunk look, I was like, okay, I've given myself more work to do now. Uh, so we brought in our line producer, who's uh, Kavita, uh, who also worked with film Birmingham, and she's a very good friend of ours. And uh, she helped, you know, locate all of the, the neon looking, cyberpunk looking locations in and around Birmingham. And surprisingly, Birmingham has quite a lot of them if you're looking in the right area. And so with, with her help, we were able to locate some really good locations. Um, and I think we probably filmed probably 90% of the movie in a neon lit place. And it looks fantastic. <laughs>